Welcome to Between the Brackets. I'm your own Corinne. My guests for this episode are Richard Heigl and Marcus Glaser, who are two of the founders of the German technology company Hollow Welt. Hollow Welt does MediaWiki consulting and development, and they're best known for producing the MediaWiki distribution Blue Spice. So, Richard and Marcus, welcome to the program. Thank you. Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, so you guys are actually in the same room right now, which is great to see, considering, of course, the lockdown happening now. Where are you guys? We are in Regensburg. It's uh, a city in the middle of Bavaria. And, uh, yeah, famous for the yeah, Danube. Yeah. And it's a, it's a nice place to stay. Maybe you can just come around and have a look at it. That sounds great. I feel like I was there, but I, I'm actually not 100% sure. <laughs> um, it's it's sort of in the... Is it in the middle of Germany? No, it's in the southeast, southeast of Germany. Okay. okay. Yeah. okay. Um, so, so uh, Richard, I, I want to start with you. What were you doing before you got involved with MediaWiki? <laughs> Enjoying my life. Um, <laughs> uh, no, seriously, I, um, yeah, I studied history and, uh, German literature and, uh, yeah, I, I tried to become a, a serious historian, uh, <laughs> and work, I, I'd like to work for a new university, but, um, yeah, on that way, then it turns out that it is better to get a to get a job where you can earn a mother, some money and have a living. And that was the way how I came to Hollowell in the end. Yeah, do you have any, did you have any technical background no. at that point? No, no, <laughs> not really. No, I gave some lectures uh, for, for adults, um, uh, like uh, introducing the internet um, or CSS, HTML, um, office um, programs and so on in the office suite. Um, so I have a background, but I, the background I have now is um, uh, that I have learned a lot of discussing uh, customer problems and uh, requirements together with Marcus. And so he is the expert for, for technical questions. So I, I have to sell everything. I have to organize marketing and products and people. Yeah, okay. Uh, I, yeah, I wanted to ask about the history stuff, actually, because this is something I'm personally curious about. On, on Twitter and Facebook, you tend to uh, refer a fair amount to various Marxist thinkers. Are you a communist? <laughs> Depends on what sort of communist uh, you're thinking of. Uh, so maybe the, 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 the communist... Um, uh, point of view in 1848 or by Marx, maybe, yes. No, I, I think uh, I have a, um, yeah, I, I'm in a, in, a, in a Marx tradition. So um, so I learned a lot of it, uh, reading reading Marx and, and the Marxist uh, writers. And uh, that was very important for me, for my scientific work in the end. And uh, yeah, but um, I don't think that most people know exactly what that means. So it's uh, uh, most people are afraid to talk only about it. If, if you just mention Marx, then it's uh, and you're already in danger. Then. <laughs> sure. So well, I think it's it's an interesting cosmos. You can learn a lot of it. So, and uh, so if if you talk about the current situation, you can't do any analysis without it so I, it's not the only thing but uh, i think we should have the eyes open for everything all right well uh, let me try to stay a little bit relevant to the topic of this podcast uh, this is something I, I i i think is interesting what do you think Karl marx would think about open source software oh he he would be amazed uh he is he would be somebody who is would say yes that's that's for free, and this is now we can get the fruits of the capitalist uh, development in the last uh, 100 years. And he would be amazed about the technical solutions we, we prepare so that people can save time. And, and uh, yeah, that's uh, he is not a, so he would not nobody against uh, against a technology uh, 
progress. But and on the other hand, he's obviously not an expert when it comes to climate change and, and uh, environmental <laughs> questions. Okay, I'm actually surprised. I would have. I I I, I don't know that Marx about much about Marxist economics, but I thought uh, one of his uh, quote unquote um, uh, you know uh, uh, big ideas is is that uh, people should be paid according to how much effort they put in. In the case of open source software, you're not getting paid anything for all that effort you've put in. Yeah, I'm not sure that um, that open source is something for free. So, uh, um, so I, I think it's 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 a fair deal in so far uh, as you pay people for uh, for services, and um, that is how how it how it works. And uh, so it, there are similarities to the proprietary um, business cases, but. Um, I think it's a big difference if you have a choice uh, to go to a service provider, uh, to different service providers, and ask them to help you with your problems. And so with the difference is, uh, if you look at Microsoft and others, then you have uh, huge companies who can set you under pressure to buy their goods and, or their products. And uh, so I think that makes it much more open and uh, much more you can have much more productivity in the end. Sure. Well, from the perspective of the customer, yes. I'm not. I'm, I don't know. If from the perspective of the developer, the poor uh, wage slave developer who's forced to give away his uh, his labor for for free. Um. All right. Well. Anyway, I I would ask what Marx would think of you, uh, Richard, as a as a bourgeois company owner. But I think we all know the answer to that question. I. Uh, he would say this is one of the usual suspects. Um, uh, no, I, I think it's um, open source has has made an an, uh, an innovation in how to how to work with um, goods that are for free and how you can uh, organize contracts around that where you can get on a regular basis and some sort of an income. But this is it is true, it's, it's a hard thing because you have to become uh, a manufacturer. And uh, so for the most people who are working in, in our business, they are yeah, like freelancers or um, they are depend on projects. And this is always this is a very hard, uh, this is a very hard business. Uh, if I, sure. So that is a problem. And uh, yeah, we're, we are in the, in, the, in the midst of this um, of this uh, development to 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 organize money and income for people and um, on a regular basis, and it's a struggle. So we have to learn this over ten years, and it was quite hard. Ten years? Oh, oh I see. Since you started Hollow, you you personally as a, yeah. I thought you meant society. Yeah, you personally as a company. Sure. Yeah, we'll get to that. All right. Well, anyway, moving on um, from. <laughs> the political stuff. Um, uh, uh, Marcus, how about you? What were you doing before you started uh, with MediaWiki and HelloVelt? Um, yeah, so I also I studied at Regensburg University. I studied information science um, and um, started my professional life as a freelance um, developer. Freelance, so, you know, do the websites of people and then um, I gradually started developing. Um, and I also like Richard uh, went to um, become a, um, a trainer uh, for uh, any development related stuff. So I gave, I taught people how to code. Um, right. Essentially. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, so then over the time, um, I think one landmark uh, probably was when we wrote a book together on wikis. Like, so we are colleagues here, author colleagues <laughs> on that page. Um, and um, that was basically when we expected um, things to lift off and, and everything to explode around us, um, and then nothing happened after we published the book. <laughs> but uh, like a year later or so, um, people came, approached us, um, and the authors of the book were Richard, Anya, and I. Um, so that's the team that basically now is the owner team of Hollowell. 
Yeah. Okay. The the book was. Uh, yeah, I remember that. I haven't read the book. Sorry, but I, I remember. Uh, it 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 was it, it's it's called Wiki Web Collaboration. Yeah, yeah it was um, the original title was Wiki Tools, and that has an interesting story because back then. Um, we talked to the uh, to the publisher, and they said, "Well, wiki and wiki wiki that sounds so like a, a play tool for children. So we need to <laughs> label it differently. That is not professional, right?" So that's uh-huh. what they said. And then they came up with, "Can we do something like wiki software?" Or, and, and and we ended up calling it wiki tools, which um, in, in 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 hindsight, I don't name back when looking back. Um, basically was not a good idea because the term wiki is now well established Um, and we changed the title for the English um, version of the book uh, to wiki uh, from wiki tools um, to reflect that oh okay I get it this was a few years later when it came out in English yeah Yeah, okay it's interesting yeah I guess that uh, you know people reacted the the same way to the word wiki as they did to the concept of wikis yeah (laughs) It took some, uh, you know, <laughs> they, they did, getting used to. Yeah, they did not take it serious, and I thought this is like, you know, playing uh, playground stuff. But yeah, now yeah, now we are in a very professional environment, and yeah, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, so how did you? How did all of you meet? Uh, yeah, and and think to was it was it related to the book, or did you know each other beforehand? Um, yeah, I think we, so we all went to the same university in various contexts um, and uh, got to know each other um, doing common projects, right? So um, uh, Richie was leader of a student revolt back then um, and Anja and I <laughs> studied the same thing. Also, um, uh, Rado, our fourth founder. And we had several projects in Bar- so organizing conferences, writing papers, doing like you know term papers, um, and that was. And then we started like going the same professional direction of being uh, trainers and um, uh, freelancers, and we knew that. I guess, I mean, I can only talk for me now, but I knew that this is a group of people. We went through highs and lows by then. We we did know how I I knew how Richie would react in a very stressful situation, or when he gets angry. I knew that we can resolve that somehow, and right. that was a good up. And of course, he did not get angry very often. <laughs> um, but you know, that was for me it was a very interesting thing because I knew the people I'm going to start a company with are the people. I know how they react in difficult situations, so I can rely on them. Sure, I know sure. we're working towards a common goal, um, and we can resolve um, differences if we have them, and we do have a good, um, uh, say, a good uh, will for making compromise or come to a common solution for, for problems. And um, that was when I thought, yeah, I, I, it, it's, it would be really cool to... to um, to go on a common um, endeavor um, with those people, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah I agree. It's re- it's re- it's it's very imp- important to know your uh, the people you're thinking of, you know, going to business with together uh, for, for to, to know them for a while before you do it. And make sure you know that you're compatible and and all of that. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So. So, uh, so, so, at that point, you decided to found Hollow Velt. Did Hollow Velt come before the idea of of doing wiki stuff, or was it the other way around? It was uh, no. Uh, we 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 have written that book, and um, and we were freelancers, a group of freelancers, and then we would like to stay like that. But then um, the the author of the forward come round. He was uh, actually he was a CTO at IBM, and he asked us to to help him to uh, establish or set up an internal wiki at I, uh, IBM Germany. And for that reason, we have to uh, found Hallo Welt. And uh, so, <laughs> nobody intended to found a company, but then it was necessary. I see. Yeah. And uh, Hello Welt means Hello World, which is yes. a great, yeah, 
that's a great name for a tech company, uh, but for people who know programming, um, yeah, yeah, I'm very, I, I'm jealous of that name. It's, uh, uh, so, um, so yeah, so it started with this uh, project for IBM. Um, can can you? It seems like that that project really started everything. Um, from what I understand, can you talk about that? Yeah, um, it, it was <laughs> so. Uh, IBM has had so this at this time uh, hundreds of wikis based on Confluence, and so what they tried to start was an internal Wikipedia. It has it, it got the name Bluepedia in the end, and it was quite interesting to see that um, it is also possible to start an uh, knowledge sharing. Uh, wiki within a, such a huge company and all the management is had to learn how to deal with that and to accept that people can change pages and uh, and how they can uh, make the quality assurance and all that stuff so that was a bit of cultural uh, shock um, for for right. them and for us as well because we have had no no contact with huge companies. Nobody knows knew how we can uh, charge them. And so, I, I, it's in, if you look back, that it's always a big wonder. Um, uh, if you see what problems you have today to uh, just to offer a company uh, that size um, your services, but. Um, I think that yeah. has changed a lot. We, we learned a lot about the insights of uh, such companies and. Uh, I think the second huge move was uh, two or three years later when we learned much more about management systems and the people are using, uh, like to use wikis for um, for, for uh, defining processes, procedures, responsibilities, roles and that stuff, which sounds very boring, but it's necessary for them. And maybe it's a very German approach to uh, running a company, but um, <laughs> but this is what where we now where we have seen where can you go and what do the people really need. So we, we thought in the first years that we will support huge web projects, uh, public um, wikis. So, but in the end, we, we, we ended with internal wikis and uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, systems. right. Yeah, I also found, find it interesting. I mean, back then that was 2008 or 2009. So that was a time when people were still experimenting a lot with wikis. So people did not really understand, or nobody, I guess, knew what would be a good use case for a wiki in a company context. You know, organizational right. structures, you have um, strong hierarchies, you have like mostly the opposite of what a wiki promises. Yeah. Um, and it was really an interesting time because we we also did experiment a lot with um, with features with with openness and and with how to actually get people involved and stuff like that. Um, and I, yeah, I, I think we learned a lot by by doing that. And also, I I hope we shaped the world a little bit, the wiki enterprise, the wiki world a little bit with that. Um, yeah, it was very interesting, I guess. Sure. Yeah. I mean, thinking back, there uh, there weren't. Uh, I mean, pe people had people set up wikis at their companies, but there weren't really. I mean, it was just a place for people to to put random information or something. It wasn't a concept of using it to actually store processes or, uh, uh, yeah, all the all the you know more sophisticated stuff. Yeah, you know, that was a time where you had to explain um, the, the the people working in these companies, what is a wiki, what is the concept of a wiki, and I remember that I think 1,000 times I told people, don't just put a wiki in and leave it empty, you need to have some, you know, content, uh, some concepts, some, some preferred content, and that, that was not um, uh, not so well known back then, and, and um, uh, there was a lot of right. of work to convince um, to convince people in um, how to do it, or you know, even let go of the strong hierarchies. That's what um, I guess what now is kind of common knowledge when you is, when you uh, work with wikis and companies. But it was um, we, we faced a lot of internal fear. I mean, not only not so much yeah. with the IBM project because that was the 
project of very early adopters, but then later on going to other companies, we had to explain that a lot and we had to, to help them lose their fear of letting go. Um, yeah. And, yeah. And you needed the features. So what we needed was a visual editor. Yeah, we yeah. needed, uh, then we need uh, some approval stuff. So uh, like like flag drafts or so. And uh, you know that much better because you are also a developer. You know what what they are asking for in a, this professional environment. And so sure. that was yeah. was now the direction. So we we tried to don't lose ground against against Confluence or, or SharePoint and uh, make MediaWiki you know, viable, acceptable within its professional environments. And uh, yeah, that took it took some time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, a lot of those same fears, as, as you guys exactly pointed out, are still around today. Uh, uh, you know, people who... Uh, It especially comes up when people talk about uh, access control and, you know, making sure that people can't read or write the pages that they're not supposed to because they bo they're only this level or, only, or belong to this department or that kind of thing. Um, was that was that a big thing for, for you guys, uh, access control and people, uh, you know, was, did you spend a lot of time thinking about, like, about how to add access control into the system? I will, we'll talk about the features Uh, I'm, just I'm just curious, curious about, about that, that one specifically. specifically. Yeah, I think, uh, yes, uh, obviously that's a big topic all the time. Um, so, uh, and I have to admit that I think we also changed our view here. So uh, while initially we propagated that totally open and flat hierarchy wiki, we understand more now that in, in some contexts, um, you, maybe you have legal obligations or um, there are some right. some really practical reasons why you would need some kind of some sort of restrictions depending on what kind of content you have in the wiki um, so um, the, you can have several approaches when you when you work on this like difficult terrain um, and um, I know some befriended companies they uh, did not go down that path of like having ACL or rights permission and they advised their company strongly against it. We took a different part. We said um, we need to make our customers happy while still not probably um, giving up on our principles. So um, I personally like the idea of, say, flag drafts very much, um, where you can uh, somewhat restrict editing, but you still have enable people to continue working on the pages. And um, right. we, we also, so we, all, we try to get that balance um, between locking up content and and um, and the the free spirit that's in the wiki, um, uh, yeah. So your question was: Is is it a big deal? Rights management. I think it's a big deal, um, and it is uh, one of the defining features. Or the question: How you handle permissions is one of the defining things when you work with wikis on a professional level. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. It, it's it certainly keeps coming up, uh, and it, a, a lot of people still ask about it, uh, and I guess they always will. Um, uh, so yeah, back to the history. How did you how did you um, get uh, additional clients after IBM? In the beginning. No, by accident. No. T um, a few came around with reading our book, and uh, so we. Yeah, we, we were uh, around in the country, and uh, so we was, we were on a, on on fair, and uh, and we wrote articles in in magazines and so on. And but uh, then the people came to us. That that was then much easier, and uh, in a very early stage, because there were not so many uh, service providers which are. Um, giving you help with uh, with, with MediaWiki, and so because there are just a few uh, of them, so it was a bit easier to get customers. Sure, yeah, and these were all in Germany. Yeah, I think initially, yes, we were mostly German companies. Um, I did. I just struggled to remember when we had our first international customer. Um, Australia, uh, I think about 2009 or 10. 
Das yeah, muss ja yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Telecommunication Company. <lacht> yeah, quite interesting thing. They tried to introduce a wiki, but uh, uh, yeah, didn't, didn't, it was not so successful. But for other reasons. So um, you need all this internal support for for such projects. And um, yeah, it's a political thing in huge companies to introduce new tools. Um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, I mean, you, you sort of got to that before, but it's, it's, uh, it's, you know, a hundred times easier when people contact you than when you, than trying to convince anyone to, uh, to, to use a wiki, media wiki or, or any, any kind of wiki. Uh, yeah, and it really, you pretty much have to have someone on the inside who supports you, I, I feel like. Yeah, but now uh, it's, it's uh, of course, we are following the open source way. So we have a distribution out there that's free, which people can use. And uh, that makes it much easier because they use it already for one or two years and so on. And it's, after a time, they come around and say, okay, we need additional features like uh, the quality assurance stuff or book uh, functionalities or professional service and service level agreements. And then, okay, yeah. here we are. And this is, I think, uh, now the most, or at the least, say, half of our uh, customers have already experience with uh, Blue Spice Free. With Blue Spice specifically. Well, okay, great. Yeah, yeah, let's talk about Blue Spice. Um, when did Blue Spice come out? 2011. Uh, so we have had a, a, some sort of a bundle uh, the years before, but... Um, really to, to really start an open source uh, project was um, was introduced that was introduced in 2011 and we started with an open core um, model which means you have a free a free version and you have additional modules which has to be paid and after a few years we found out this is too uh, that's too much uh, that's too complicated for for the customers And uh, then we switched over to a subscription model, um, which was oriented on, on SUSE and Red Hat, where you just put everything in and we have a free edition and we have a professional edition. And we don't sell any additional modules or, or extensions. So it makes it much easier for, for, for both sides to calculate the, <laughs> the yearly, the yearly, uh, yearly uh, fees. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, so the idea is, well, we'll get to all the features. Uh, we will get to the features, but um, so the idea is, uh, you can you can get most of Blue Spice for free, but if you want, well, obviously, if you want support, then you pay uh, some yearly amount, and then additionally, there are some features that you can only get if you pay. Yes, that's right. Uh, but uh, it's it's a secret, or not really a secret, that we have published now nearly all of our extensions. So if you want to install it on the, at your own, then you can do this. Uh, so just actually, I had a, a non-customer uh, three days ago who said, okay, he has uh, set up his own pro version, um, just uh, <laughs> downloading everything. But right. uh, that is okay. Uh, so we can wait. Uh, <laughs> that just takes time. But sometimes then you say, I don't want to do that anymore. So please do do that. Help me with that. And, I, uh, I guess that's kind of a model we're seeing with other software, uh, open source software um, more often. So essentially all of the software can be found somewhere on, on GitHub. Um, right. But it... We, we might not make it super easy to build a pro version on your own. So let's put it that way. So <laughs> if you want, yeah. you could theoretically. Um, but actually, I'm, I'm not afraid of people doing that because um, uh, what uh, the, the standard open source um, business model, I guess, is the services around it. So we provide stability for our customers. Some of the customers are also required to have subscription subscri um, supported software. Um, so even if it were fully uh, in, uh, fully bundled in a pro docker image for example the customers most of the customers will still have to buy the subscription because of their legal um, and, and compliance requirements mm. um, so I think it's 
um, going open source uh, is is the biggest um, uh, biggest progress we made when uh, when we made that decision early in the company. Um, and actually, as a developer, it makes me sleep better because I know if something bad happens, if, if we produce like a bad bug in the software, the community will find it before our customers find it. So that's really well, good. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Uh, <laughs> I feel like we need a legal disclaimer on that one, actually. <laughs> um, wait, so so well, I, I well, okay. I, just briefly, I want to. I, I, uh, what you said was interesting that there's l legal aspects to people just downloading the software and using it. Does that mean some of the code is not open source license? It's it's. You can v you can view the code, but it's not actually GPL or something. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. So um, I'm saying if a company say is certified um, um, ISO 9001 quality assurance certified, then all of their software they need for documentation needs to be supported. Um, and supported means they need to have a person who they can call if the software is broken. So that's a legal uh, compliance requirement. Um, that's what I'm yeah. saying. I see. And yeah, sure. So, um, and that's our target audience. So we are targeting um, mostly um, companies um, like they're a little bit bigger, uh, and um, they they write documentation. Um, they have higher requirements for documentation, so that that's typically um, where they also are, fall into these compliance um, uh, criterions. Yeah. Okay. Um, I want to talk about all of that but uh first just just um uh, just to get back to the the background of uh of uh blue spice um uh how did you how did you where's the name come from <laughs> uh so first we had the idea to um, call it blue note but uh, as everybody knows that it's a very famous chess um, brand record label, label. a yeah. record label, yeah, a record label. Yes, you're right. And uh, so we have had to find uh, quickly uh, an alternative. And we have a partner um, uh, this time, and he has um, uh, he is very familiar with, with the Asian culture, and he was in favor of something with spice. And ah. so it, it came out, it is Blue Spice then. Yeah. So unfortunately, it is not coming from a very famous movie, uh, The Dune. But it still empowers you. Yeah. Of oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Blue is actually a, like a small reference to our first project with IBM because that's big. Blue. Well, yeah, I was going to ask, right, if, if Blue is, uh, the Blue part came from Bluepedia. Yeah. yeah. Which in turn is because IBM is Big Blue for people exactly. who don't know. Uh, so I so I guess your product is sort of named after IBM. It's yeah, it's a, it's it's a reference to our uh, beginnings. Let's put it sure. like a yeah. little bit of nostalgia there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. No, it's a, it's a great name, uh, uh, unique but uh, catchy, and uh, yeah, IBM plus Dune. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not really. Um, uh, and then, um, uh, uh, actually, just one other thing about the name is: it, is it Blue Spice or Blue Spice Media Wiki or Blue Spice Four Media Wiki? I've seen all of those. So yes, it, it, first it was Blue Spice Four Media Wiki because we were um, not sure if the Wikimedia Foundation will make some trouble, and uh, it was just an addition to everything. But it's now uh. it's, it's it's called Blue Spice Media Wiki is the official name, and it becomes more and more just blue spice but um so the reference to media wiki is important for us because uh it's like red hat or it's red hat linux and um, so people right. should know That's it true. is linux and it's uh and we have a bridge to uh, media wiki and the communities and, and the developers around that and that should be we would strengthen that community and uh, uh so that it's, it must be important it's important for us to make this reference to media wiki yeah, yeah. Um, so, okay. Well, let, uh, let's talk about the actual features. Um, what what are these? What are the features that people using Blue Spice can get? Uh, you know, besides, of course, what's just in MediaWiki. Oh, 
Generally, at least, at least the highlights. I mean, yeah, I know it's, there's it's, a lot. It starts, there's of course, lot. with with the uh, with the visual editor and the search integration with Elasticsearch. But um, so mostly, they are in favor of um, of uh, the quality assurance uh, features, like having a workflow, having an approval system, or you can make books and, and for, for making manuals and stuff like that you can organize your your content and of course uh, there is a, a huge thing or important thing is um, the, the semantic stack so uh, the semantic media wiki extensions which makes the whole thing uh, very 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 uh, interesting for so many use cases uh, because you can configure a lot of certain things so it's like yeah like like cargo um, it's uh, you can deal with metadata and you can work with forms um, which is also very important you know that and <laughs> uh, so yeah, and this yeah. as a bundle makes it possible uh, to use it for documentation uh, management systems manuals that's so that's one thing and you buy also a knowledge sharing system which opens is open for everything, nearly everything. But um, I think that's only the one thing of the features. Um, so very important are now other things like you can get it as a Docker image. Um, we, you can use it within a wiki farm and you can centrally organize uh, several wikis or you are, if you want to, you can use it within a distributed um, architecture so that are also requirements which came up in the last years and um, so become more and more important and uh, yeah we, we, we try to uh, meet those requirements uh, as good as we can and so a lot of development is in the background uh, you don't see it at the first place and uh, if you're a blue space free user don't know normally don't know what we're doing most of our time well i guess yeah. maybe one uh, one or two additions so um all the management side of it like yeah. user management rights management setting up namespaces configuring namespaces via interface um that might seem not so important if you're not in a corporate context but it makes a huge difference for our users if they can manage stuff using a web interface or if they have to call the IT department, find someone who knows how to access the server and then write some local settings code. So um, that, um, it, I guess, is, is a big thing. Um, and also um, various ways of, of structuring content. Um, uh, we introduced the um, kind of a really, in, in my view, a good way, a good breadcrumb line um, where you can actually navigate through sub pages in really fast manner or um, templates, uh, pre-fill templates for pages. When you create a new page, you can mm. just uh, pre-fill it with content. So that stabilizes the content, um, that uh, unifies the content a little bit and gives like people patterns which they can hold on. Um, maybe on, on, on like right. a bigger level, I think we, Blue Spice tunes, um, tunes MediaWiki to a, f a few specific use cases um, and um, of course company en encyclopedia is, is like the obvious case with media wiki also with blue spice but we have these handbook documentation for example we have documentation that involves some sort of workflows um, uh, we have more structural or formal documentation and then if you go to that there's a lot of tiny bits in and pieces um, and generally speaking, I think that's what makes MediaWiki great as well. Mm. MediaWiki is a software where you can see it comes out of practice. It's not a theoretical software that was designed and then um, uh, and, and, and then people use it, but it's what people used it and then it was designed on top right, of the sure. usage. And I guess in BlueSpice we kind of follow a similar approach. So BlueSpice is basically a huge collection of our customers' use cases and how we made made it smooth for our customers to, to um, run a specific use case on MediaWiki or on BlueSpice. Um, and, and that's uh, what I, where I think we are in the tradition of MediaWiki and what I like about, about the software. Uh, yeah, 
yeah i couldn't agree more I, there's um it, it um there's no point designing software too much ahead of time because you you'll you'll find out from your customers right away or users what uh what works and what doesn't uh um well this well you brought up a lot of things <laughs> um yeah it's interesting that thing that that, that you mentioned marcus uh, about um uh, managing users and user rights and namespaces from the web interface. It's it's strange that there is no way to do that in MediaWiki and there aren't really uh, standard extensions to do that either. Um, yeah, I agree. That's that's exactly the kind of the dashboard type thing that, that MediaWiki is kind of weak on. Um, I have my uh, admin links extension, which uh, which tries to add a, another compo- part of the the whole dashboard thing, and so uh, yeah, I, I agree that that's uh, great to have. Um, uh, a, a lot of the other things you mentioned are things that well, I guess this ties into the sort of the history of Blue Spice. A lot of those things are things that uh, may not have existed in two thousand seven or two thousand eleven or whenever it was, but but do exist now like visual editor obviously you had your own WYSIWYG editor which was yeah. also called visual editor but which was different uh uh and and uh, you mentioned things like creating books i don't know what the state of that was in in at the beginning but there are i mean there are actually i'm not sure <laughs> if it's any better now than it was before there are at least different tools now for uh, standard tools for creating books um uh yeah uh yeah i mean how much of of this the strength of blue spice is just is just putting together the right uh components and making it uh, easy to install as opposed to your own custom solutions for these uh features um it's a an interesting question i think so if you look at blue spice and the blue spice code um i would say um, we have grown quite a lot, so Blue Spice code itself is, I, I estimate that we have like a third of MediaWiki's code of the size of MediaWiki is, um, is also is the size of Blue Spice by now, wow. so it's really big. Um, but you mentioned an interesting thing here, so um, that is the fate of the third party, so the community, I guess. Um, we can be faster than um, than MediaWiki and, and maybe uh, at, at least yeah. MediaWiki core development. And you, since you mentioned visual editor, so when we started working on that visual editor, there was no visual editor inside um, of the foundation. And I can understand it. It's it's really it's harder if you have to support um, a, a document um, base of I don't know how many million documents. Um, we could just define things like we could just say don't use um, a certain construct um, uh, and don't use definition list because it's not supported and then if you don't use definition list you can use our editor safely right so um, but then uh, of course um, when a team of say 25 or 30 developers starts doing the same thing you do with a team of two back then um, they come up with a better solution. So that's the, bad, the the downside of that fate, right? So you can be faster, you can provide features to the market or to people faster, but then eventually somebody will come and will maybe do it better than you did. And um, in, in, in Visual Editor, that was my baby when, uh, when I started that, um, and I spent a lot of time and, and pain um, <laughs> into development, um, but in the end, I was um, I was not unhappy that somebody else took over the the development here, um, because then we can focus on new things, right? And and maybe be faster in in, uh, in another area. Yeah, what about the the uh, the book creation thing? Are you are you do you have your own solution for that, or are you using something? that it already exists? Um, that's totally our own solution. So um, I know there is um, collections and well. we, we evaluated collections, um, but we decided to go for our own books. Now, this is one of the hidden champions of Blue Spice because the, the book creation itself looks very simple. So you create a table of contents and then that's the book and you get the site navigation. But the real strength is you can then export the book 
Um, and um, with the help of our customers um, and uh, their suggestions on how to improve that, um, this exported book is now something that complies with every regulation you can see on, at least in Germany. Um, uh, be it uh, the, the version history, be it no drafts or drafts if you want to have them, be it indication of, you know, state of documents. Um, and that was um, something, um, it would not have been efficient to do this with the existing uh, MediaWiki extensions. So that's what we found. Um, and, and in some cases, you need to rewrite from scratch. I normally don't like this. I normally say, let's take what, what is there and prove. But in some cases, you need to rewrite from scratch. And Bookmaker was one of these instances. Yeah. No, I think that was a good idea, a good decision, because I, I think, I don't know what the state of collection is. I think it's been dead for a long time. I, yeah. Uh, but there there are other tools, but it, it sounds like yours uh, works really well. Um, um, so many things to ask about, uh, and it's already been an hour, but... <laughs> um, well, yeah, um, I want to ask about uh, your use of semantic media wiki and, uh, and and page forms, uh, which you mentioned. I also want to ask about the the whole um, compliance and ISO or ISO stuff, ISO nine thousand and one, and all that. I, it seems to me those two are sort of related, uh, but I'm not sure. But well, I guess we'll start with with SMW. You weren't using it at the beginning, I assume. When 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 did it make its way into Blue Spice? 2015. Yeah. Uh, so we, we announced it at an SMWCon 2015. And uh, so the challenge was that it doesn't break <laughs> with the visual editor at that time. And uh, you need some, some uh, you can explain it better, you need some, some extensions which, intru- uh, which, um, uh, like, um, mm-hmm. which integrates that. Uh, right. to the it, other it, extensions. So we don't only make collections of extensions, it's much more important to standardize the, the interfaces and uh, sure. so that it comes together. And then that was one of the, the, the challenges we had, but it was not too high, but it, that was uh, the important thing. And we were very late with uh, introducing Semantic because we didn't see um, our, the, the, the richness of, this, of the system for our use cases. Uh, so we yeah. have to learn this after a while, and uh, so on today we would say, okay, this is a, this is it's very important uh, stack of solutions. Yeah. So when it comes to these specific use cases, um, uh, so so semantic has some strengths and some weaknesses, right? Um, a, a big strength is the flexibility of semantics. You can uh, model a lot of of data and data relations using semantics and, and then ask to, to queries, uh, query that. But when it comes to, say, automation, um, it's it's not so, um, at least to my knowledge, um, it's not so deeply integrated. So, for example, when we have this workflow tool, which essentially sends a page from person A to person B to person C, and, and they have to say yes or no, and then um, it gets... Um, the, the, the workflow does something with it. Um, that's not super easy in, in semantics. But then again, if I wanted to have um, 10 document parameters, uh, say um, who's responsible, who's the owner, who's the next editor, and who's the um, publisher. Every company has a different set of these. Right. So some have a document ID, some have a, um, a department ID plus a department document ID, and they want to label it that right. way. Um, so um, it, we're increasingly seeing that the combination of like automation tools like our workflow and the um, uh, the, 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 the the data structure that uh, um, Semantic provides us, if we tie that together. Um, that would be really a powerful thing, and, and we're doing that. Um, so, for example, we make heavy use of semantic extra special properties, uh, where our extensions introduce values, semantic properties into semantic, so we can uh, use our queries to to um, to analyze that. Um, 
And uh, I guess one of the next steps we are actively thinking about is to uh, provide, for example, form elements in page forms where you can actually trigger workflows or trigger document states that are then tracked by our automation tools, right? So um, I think there's uh, the, 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 the strength is um, it, it becomes really powerful when you add, when you use the data structure of semantics and add some sort of automated whatever um, processing on top of it. And, and that's what, where, where I think Blue Spice is heading at the moment. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, it's, as far as workflow is an, is an interesting one because it's something that people, uh, I mean, people ask about a lot just in, just in terms of, you know, you, you change a value and you want somebody to get emailed about it or um, uh, even potentially changing the permissions. I don't know if you do it that far that, you know, once it's assigned quote unquote to another person, that means that person can now edit it, whereas they couldn't edit it before. That's yeah, pretty much yeah. it. That's in, in some, so in, in the workflow tool, it's whenever it's your turn to, um, uh, to, to review the page, you do have edit rights and the others don't have edit rights. So that's one of the setups we can do here. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, uh, yeah. Speaking of the challenges, I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm the sort of co-author of a, an extension called Edit Notify. I uh, just wanted to plug that there. It, it, uh, it's supposed to help with workflow stuff, so you can say if some template field changed from changed to B, then, then you can, uh, you know, use a hook to uh, to do whatever you want, email people or do anything else. But it's not that widely used. But uh, I I'm aware of that extension. Oh, really? Okay. We also right. use it, yeah. So. Oh, really? You use it? Big extension, yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. Oh. Huh. That is because oh. in, in, in our case, it overcame the um, uh, the limitations of watch lists, where watch lists would, um, you would just watch a page, but forget that you already got an email and then not see if there were changes like later on. Sure. Edit Notify does just send out notifications on certain triggers, so that's really great. And then um, we um, we use that um, in some cases. Yeah. Cool. That's really good to hear. Maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll change the status if I see it's still at beta status right now. Maybe I'll change it to uh, stable. Oh, that's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> finding out all the secrets. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> I'm now aware of an international uh, corporation making use of this extension. Uh, I've been made aware. Uh, um, so, yeah, gosh. Um, um, so, yeah, I wanted to. Ask, so, 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 as far as you, you, you sort of hinted at this before, but d does Blue Spice come uh, in with with its own uh, data structures? Like forms and templates and so forth that have uh, uh, some semantic media wiki tags built in, in addition to the extensions. Do you do you define those also? It yeah, it sounds like, like you do. Yeah, we do. Uh, so um, it, it, there's there's uh, again you have to differentiate. So uh, we um, everything that can be done programmatically, um, we do it. So we add tags, we add magic words. Um, uh, we add semantic extra special properties, um, but BlueSpice does not, as of now, come with like predefined content. So we don't have predefined templates. Uh, okay. um, we see uh, BlueSpice more as a toolkit or a platform where people can build this stuff on top, right? So we support certain workflows. We help. We also help our customers, of course, create these templates. Um, but if you install BlueSpice, you get a blank. Um, a, a blank wiki as you would get it with MediaWiki, so there is no additional content for now. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, so how do uh, I guess? I guess um, how do you get all of that functionality that you're talking about in? Um, um, I don't know. I mean, so, so let's say somebody says, you know, I want to comply with with the. Uh, all of these regulations or whatever else I want to have a workflow set up. Uh, how, how do they do that? If they're, if they are subscribed or whatever the word is, if they're customers. Yeah, normally they, they subscribe the, um, the current edition and, and mostly they come around with some ideas and say, Oh, can you, oh, we need this and that feature. And can you do that? And then we, 
um, yeah, normally we we produce that for them uh, together in a in a in a project, and then we have to make a decision if you put that into the product. And this is something that we are talking today um, very very heavily about uh, what will be within the product in the future and how strong is is the or how um, yeah how many customer specific uh, developments can we put into the into the product because we have all, also our own ideas what we want to do with that product and right. we have to improve that and we have to integrate that and but if, if you're always working for uh, customers and their customizations you'd never come to a product and <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. so this is always you f- must find a good balance and sometimes you have long discussions with your customers and talking about ideas and bring this those uh, different approaches together and so but we have to learn to be better with that in the future yeah. and then um, th- so that it become more and more uh, uh, what, what would I say uh, meet um, um, common standards within our, within our product yeah um, I, I think so your question on how the customer um, gets their use case implemented in Doospice, um is typically we do have we we do um, a consultation on that so um, we do have, we make workshops we um, initially we, we have typically one day where we ask the customer what their needs is and um, we come up with an idea um, which typically does not involve a lot of customization in terms of coding right so we try to do it with onboard technology. Um, as I said, integrate and create templates and and, and, and whatnot, and then yeah. um, uh, th- that takes two or three of those sessions or days, and, and we gradually get to um, a solution that works good well for the customer and, and um, is also cost effective. Yeah, so that's and but the, sometimes customers want like the top notch uh, stuff, um, a button for everything, for example, and then <laughs> um, of course we uh, we um, we switch to coding um, and to, to okay, right, to extensions. I also want to have this button for everything. Yeah. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that was an option. Huh? <laughs> I'll have to talk to you guys after the show. Uh, the, <laughs> I'm not taking um, this here. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but it is cool. I mean, yeah, it's cool having having a, a lot of buttons for, for for things and having icons for different all the the nice little touches at the end and icons for different kinds of pages and all that kind of stuff. I don't know if you actually if you guys do that. Maybe I'm just making that up. Um, uh, um, wow. Uh, blah blah blah. So. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I, I do think I, I, I do think um, built-in data structures are, are the way of the future. I don't know if you're talking about that at all, but um, uh, I, I, I do think in in the future, MediaWiki packages will include, well, at least some will in, will include data structures. Of course, you can modify them, but I, but I, I do think it makes to to have makes sense to have some starting ones for to, to match common use cases. That's just something I've been thinking about. Um, anyway, um, are you something like that at the moment? W- sorry, um, uh, aren't you working on some? Content well, yeah, I, I I released an extension a few months ago, actually called Page Exchange, yeah. that uh, tries to make that easier to do. Um, so it's sort of it's you know sort of like a, a not really, but sort of like a Git repository or something for your template code or form code or whatever it is. So, uh, if people haven't made their own custom changes, then they can uh, they can you know get the latest version of the of whatever that page or set of pages is. Yeah, we've been, um, we've been watching that uh, development because I I also agree that um, that content or, or uh, predefined or template structures data structures are a big thing, um, and I was quite happy when when I saw your announcement on the mailing list. Um, on that, so it, for for us for Hello World, it, this is a question of identity, and we are um, somewhat also um, 
maybe not struggling, but this is an ongoing discussion. So um, we see ourselves as software developers and software providers, right? So um, uh, we're not totally going down the path of, of consultation, like say, okay, if you want your ISO 9001 handbook, then here's the structure. Because there are right. people that know much more about ISO 9001 than we do, but we give them the mechanisms to do so. And I think, um, and, and, and I hope Richie agrees here, I think uh, there's a huge ground for also money-making opportunities. So um, for people who are knowledgeable of, say, the processes that are required for ISO 9001 and, and do this as their day-to-day -day job, and they can provide the data structures here, even with your extension, for example, I think you could create a business model out of this. And I think that's, that's a big thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I don't think anyone is using page exchange yet, by the way, but I hope I do hope people will start inc including you guys. Um, but that's very interesting that you said that, uh, Marcus, that you don't think of yourselves as a consulting company because um, I would have thought the opposite, actually, um, uh, that that you do a lot of quote unquote hand holding for your clients. And, you know, when people when people pay for the subscription or whatever it is that's just the beginning of the process uh versus sort of the end of the process uh, uh, yeah i mean i don't know if you um have more thoughts on that. it's a it's a clear yes and no um so we do um we provide the software we do consulting we help them kick off their project let's put it that way um but as compared to when we started the company, we thought we would do something like SAP and we sent our consultant for 40 days to the customer right. would create like, so, um, uh, but it turns out that I think consulting would be like a third or 25% of our, um, mm. uh, of our income. Um, and most, we make most of our income in integration, for example. So integrate, the software with the customer's Active Directory um, or uh, with their search and, you know, help them set it up on a professional level. So that's, um, and, and, and we we realized that like over the few year, last few years and we said, well, if people see us as a software developing company, then why not be a software developer, a software product company, right? So, but it's still not, um, there's still no clear path, I think. So um, even now we decided we will focus a lot on the product, but the question is, doesn't the product imply that you can advise on the use cases mm. for the product? So, you know, right. um, it's it, there's no clear path uh, at the moment. Yeah, yeah, sure. And, it, and it, things keep changing, of course, with the 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 technology and everything. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, integration with, uh, with Active Directory and stuff is is also consulting but of course it's a different kind of yeah, consulting yeah. it doesn't you don't need to have a lot lots of meetings to think, talk about interface or whatever. Yeah. well i remember we had one project with a, together with uh, an external consultant and he um that i found that quite that was the picture i had before so he got a lot of content from his customer and and then he had this person and they would for 10 days just migrate hand by hand manually migrate that content into the wiki um and oh. but that's not the, the you know um on a higher level consult consulting is of course we advise them on semantic structures for example and we, we provide semantic uh, temp uh, the, 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 uh, the structures the customer would need um so that's what's happening but most of it is actually um uh, is, is coding yeah it's coding and uh, subscriptions like improving the product and provide updates for the product itself like the core product yeah okay do you ever i mean do, do you ever turn down consulting work or hand it uh, you know you know recommend uh, someone else to, to do it if they need a lot of help with something yeah um we it, it, it kind of depends on what the what the questions are. So um, I think in, in in the core field of um, of uh, wiki work, we we very rarely turn down something. Um, sometimes it makes more sense for someone to be 
like I don't know uh, for example uh, if there's a lot of consultation um, if for a US company we might actually look for um, somebody in the US to do that instead of doing it ourselves um, but of course um, still this this area it open source is you get a lot of requests that do have all kinds of directions and um, uh, we turn it down when it doesn't fit our um, mission let's let's put it that way so um, a Joomla wiki integration which we did like six years ago we would not do that today anymore because yeah, we don't okay. see it's a product it, it, it doesn't have that product character so uh, currently most of what you think about is does it help the the product itself right and if it does we we're happy to do it yeah yeah i agree being uh, saying no is is very important in business uh there are there's definitely some projects that i wish wikiworks had turned down at the beginning but my <laughs> consulting company yeah yeah um um usually any project that's just one person doing it is something we should, well, should we, have just turned down at the beginning but <laughs> what's more is um uh, we have um, especially in the early days when Wiki was really seen as being very in innovative, innovative, um, we had a lot of people with ideas, and um, I like people with ideas, but um, uh, they had also the idea that we would do the work and they would just sell us the idea. And right, let's <laughs> let's let's found a company together. I have the idea, you do the work. And um, we spent initially, we were felt honored because these people talked to us and. Um, uh, now we do have some kind of filter, so we say, okay, if it's if you believe in your idea um, you, and you're also willing to invest, then we might consider it. Um, but just any idea with no business model, or so that's something we turn down because there's so many ideas, and, and we have, I think, we have found our way, right? We have, found, as you said, we, we, one becomes more experienced over time, and you know what works and what doesn't work. And um, I think here is, um, and then that's where we turn down things, like when it gets too experimental, in our view. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. If it's some. Yeah. Some guy, somebody saying, you know, I have. It's gonna be like Wikipedia, but better because yeah, 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 exactly. uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. I've heard that sentence. <laughs> <Literally. Yeah. laughs> Actually, I haven't. I haven't gotten one of those emails in a while. I used to get more. Of those, but, uh, <laughs> um, do Do you guys do any public facing wikis? Uh, have you done any uh, recently, or is it is it all internal stuff? I mean, obviously, yeah. anyone can use it for anything, but uh, blue yeah, space we, for anything. Yeah, we have a few. Uh, so, um, the Lobbypedia is a is a German uh, platform um, with monitoring uh, lobbyist movement, huh. and um, so that became very famous here in this country. Uh, then we have, I, I think, one is about cancer in Australia. Yeah, there's a there's a wiki um, doing cancer regulation, cancer. Um, so, so it's 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 from from I think um, some official um, uh, some official entity um, that creates guidelines on how to yeah yeah cope with cancer. Um, there's also physiopedia. So in the medical context, that quite some um, public wikis. Physiopedia is a, a UK-based um, wiki for physiologists. Um, and uh, there are several um, several open blue spices, um, but most of them are behind closed doors. Yeah. So, so we have learned it's, it's, it's really different to run a public site because you need diff a different set of features. Uh, for instance, it's much sure. more important that you have an uh, analytics. You have you can control the access that you don't mm -hmm. you're not spammed with by bots and so on. And um, you need much more, uh, much better, or much more time to for uh, for design. Uh, you need uh, very good skins and and uh, landing pages and stuff like that. And so you have to make a decision uh, sometimes. Uh, we are not really web publishers. And uh, so, yeah. 
the internal systems are our world and uh, the external we can help a bit but uh, i think there are people who can, who can do that better than we do. okay well i'm looking at lobbypedia it looks great it's uh, yeah yeah it's a nice uh, i guess a nice demo site for blue spice uh yeah i don't know <laughs> they are uh, also using semantic by the way now the, oh yeah they, they, you can you can search for um for 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 peoples for groups uh, in certain contexts that's quite interesting what they do yeah all right cool i'll i'll put a link to this in, in the 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 web page for the episode uh, and uh, and uh, some of the other ones you mentioned physiopedia yeah um Anyway, um, I want to talk about marketing because uh, that's something I always like talking about. Um, uh, I think one of the big advantages you guys have, and I, I'm guessing you'd agree, is that you have a very simple uh, sales pitch that's very easily understood, which I think you've had since the beginning, which is basically Blue Space is it's like Wikipedia, but for the enterprise. Yeah. Um, so, so I, I mean, on your website, there's there's variations on it. In one place, you 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 say a Wikipedia for everyone, which is I think is a great four word tagline. Um, <laughs> uh, and somewhere else, you 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 say Blue Spice is the Media Wiki Enterprise Distribution, which is also a four word tagline. It's it's pretty good. Um, uh, you you don't say it's it's not you don't say it's a Media Wiki Enterprise Distribution. It's the Media Wiki Enterprise Distribution. Which is, I mean, that may or may not be technically true, but it's a, it's good marketing. Um, uh, so so um, I mean, have uh, well, I guess first of all, have is it true? Have you had that um, kind of sales pitch since the beginning? Oh no, this was that was years of learning, and uh, so to define what you're doing within one sentence or at least two. It's so hard because uh, I tried it several times, and if people are asking what are you doing, I need still need five minutes at least uh, so that they understand what we do. And um, so it's easier for people who have a media wiki background. Then I see, okay, uh, this is the enterprise edition, is an enterprise edition um, for us, and uh, then they understand this. Uh, so and, and you always, if it comes to marketing, you have. Uh, Two frontiers. So they have on, on, on the one hand, you want people say, "Hey, look, there is, we, we help you with technology," but um, so they don't have a technology problem; they have a use case problem. Then you came out and say, "Okay, right. we help you with the use case." Say, "Okay, uh, but we need uh, the technology behind it." So we, we have have many consultants who can help us with the use case, but uh, nobody who runs the media wiki. So, um, what should you do? What is your headline? And uh, you always switch between the one thing and the other. So, the last two years, uh, the use cases were put in front. And now, um, the last uh, six months, again, we are struggling with, uh, with technological questions because we are involved in our cloud service um, infrastructure, which we like to set up. And uh, so that's always hard to to find a good way for to do that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I wanted to ask about that now. Now that you have, I I don't know if it's tied in with the the use of semantic media wiki and and all of that in Blue Spice, but now that you have now that you have stuff you know relating to uh, workflow and project management and quality management and uh, and uh, data structures and all of that, it's not you can't really. It, the selling point is not really that it's just like Wikipedia, but uh, but for the enterprise because it's, I mean, Wikipedia doesn't have any of that stuff. Um, um, so yeah, I mean, is is that part of what you're getting at? That it's just it's it, it's uh, even you know all these new features are great, but they they complicate the marketing. Yeah. Um... I would put it otherwise. So, uh, we, we have started two years ago, we started a, a product strategy process where we just um, discussed what, what are our main features or what is the main use cases. So when we found out, <laughs> like always, you find out what you already know, we use support for use cases. And those four use cases or five use cases now are the 
the, the foundation for decisions um, to um, yeah what how the, this whole system should be improved uh, with the features with the UX with uh, so, so many other things. And as Marcus always put it, if you make a decision, a decision is always hard because you don't you 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 decide against something else. And if you look at the market, then there is the hell is going on collaboration. Hey, you need teams. You need. Uh, you must be need a connection to next cloud and own cloud. <laughs> and why don't you support Jira and uh, right. Bio? And please, and yes, of course, and Google uh, spreadsheet. <laughs> And so, yeah, I don't know if we don't miss something at this moment because there are huge companies, thousand times bigger than we are, um, with, uh, yeah, there is Google Docs. Why don't you use that? Or Microsoft 365, use that. And uh, the, the point we have is uh, if you're looking for a wiki and you have a, a content structure problem and... Um, that is what we can solve with that. And you have a, a search and I will find something problem. That is what we can do. And uh, so that's that's just part of the strategy because we can't serve everything. So we have to be, if you just look at Atlassian, Atlassian is 100 times bigger than we are. So they have a, 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 a portfolio of, of uh, software that's incredible. And uh, what we can stay in the market and we are, we are gaining ground because uh, we, we have this strategy and say, no, we don't do everything. We do exactly this. And we have to find a way to uh, integrate this software into others. But this is one of the next steps, I think. Um, first, we have to consolidate everything and then we can go to other places. And uh, But it's always... Oh, it's difficult. It's a hard, de hard decision. It's really hard uh, yeah. because you want to develop new things. You want to develop new features and and open the world and bring uh, applications together. And uh, but there is not so much time for this. And, uh, so the most time we we spend is uh, in <laughs> upgrading. Uh, with MediaWiki one three five, it took us uh, weeks only to to, uh, to 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 provide the the features we have had before the times. So, in terms of marketing, I think um, as you pointed out, there is an easy tagline you can relate to Wikipedia, and that's like everyone knows what it is. But the second sentence is extremely difficult. And yeah. to be honest, I think that selling wikis is not the easiest thing you can do in the global economy. Um, right. That's what, what our impression is. So um, because it's, it's complicated. And the, if the second word is documentation, then it also becomes boring for a lot of people. <laughs> so um, you have yeah. to you have to find a way. And I think Richie, um, being responsible for all the marketing, found uh, a good balance between that seriousness of things and and also make it playful a little bit. But I I think it's hard, and mm. and we see. Um, I mean. To my knowledge, we are the biggest uh, company in, in, regarding media wiki, and there is only a handful of people even making significant money out of, uh, in the ecosystem of media wiki. You are one of them, of course. Um, but I would have expected, if you look at WordPress or Joomla or a similar kind of software, I would have expected much more of an ecosystem around mm. media wiki, and, and uh, we're actually trying to work towards strengthening an ecosystem around media we keep because we think it's it should be there but one of the um, insights we gained is probably it's harder to sell media wiki um, than to sell wordpress or joomla uh, related um, services yeah it, that is true because you have a, a big audience for wordpress uh, obviously but on the other hand it also depends if MediaWiki supports an ecosystem, and that's not that's not the reality today. The Wikimedia Foundation does right. not support an external ecosystem, and this is the simple reason why there are just a few companies um, with serv as, as service providers and consultancies. Uh, and I think that's a bit 
it's a big mistake. Um, not because the people have to earn money. This is one side. Uh, I think that uh, MediaWiki is a political thing. It's the one. I mean, the only now, or oh, maybe we have two or three open source wiki software solutions out there, and this is the, the I would say the biggest one or the best. Yeah, the one with the best perspectives, and. Uh, and this is a political question. Even if you look at, uh, if you talk about uh, um, fake news and truth, and uh, I don't know, uh, so the public discussions, what, how can we um, uh, find knowledge and reliable knowledge and share the knowledge so, that this is not, it's, it's not only about making money. For me, that's a political question. I, I think Mike Hirschberger put it in, in huge words. He said, um, uh, media is opinionated software. So it, it has like an opinion in it. It has built in the idea of sharing content and, 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 and mm -hmm. free content. And that's also a message. If even, um, uh, if we do it on an, on an enterprise level, a decision for using open source software, for using media, and not a closed source software is a somewhat political decision and it makes a statement. So, yeah. and, and I think that is right. something we can, we can actually, we should push, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, well, you, you guys brought up a lot of things, uh, <laughs> uh, a, a, a lot of very interesting things. Um, yeah, it's true that the 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 number of uh, of real wiki applications uh, has has gone down substantially in the last ten years. Um, that I mean, there's a few other open source uh, wiki applications. There's just there's just fewer CMS uh, uh, solutions in general. You know, WordPress has yep. sort of dominated one area, and Drupal and Joomla have sort of dominated another. Area. I don't know what's going on with the uh, with Typo three these days, and. Um, Anyway, that's like a, that's a, sort of a German only thing, I think. But uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, um, yeah. And then there's MediaWiki. There's also XWiki and a few others, but there used to be, you know, uh, dozens. Um, there are, I think, there are more MediaWiki. I mean, obviously, we're we're nothing compared to the the size of the community for WordPress or Drupal. Uh, but I th there's more than just a few MediaWiki companies. Um, uh, I, there's uh, I don't know how many there are. There's at least uh, maybe at least twenty. I think. I mean, um, uh, of different sizes. How how big is is Hollow Velt, by the way? Uh, we are, we are twenty five at the moment. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not on the end of the month. <laughs> Well, okay, sure. Yeah. But well, no, that's right. that's really no. It's it's uh, it's a lot of fun to work with those people together, and it's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We are happy that we now can provide some some services we are waiting for for a long time. For instance, we have now somebody who can do who writes the documentation, and that's such a such a gain for us because um, people can now learn how to work with that and uh, go deeper into the certain questions. And this is, um, and so it goes on. So you learn every day uh, new skills and um, it's it's necessary. And to bring all those people together is, uh, it's not always easy, but um, then you you create power, you, you, you come forward. Sometimes we don't see that in the daily work. So we are struggling every day. Say, oh, right. <laughs> when will this come out? I can't wait. But uh, if you look from a high perspective, then uh, yes, it, it, it works. It could be faster, of course, like everything. But um, it's already something that we can rely on. And uh, so what we want to do is then to if we now have found a way how that can be done, uh, we are we'll happy to share those experiences with others so that uh, they can also find together or um, benefit from our development. As far as we know, we make a lot of mistakes, of course, and so we uh, can share that as well. <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah, that is, uh, it's interesting. 25 people is, it's, it's a step. Uh, you have to, Everybody tells you that that um, if you come over twenty, then something has changed. Uh, oh, okay, your yeah, 
Uh, yeah, well, at this point, I mean, it, it, you know, um, now that every, I'm guessing everybody is working from home, it's uh, it's kind of a different thing anyway than when everybody's in the office together. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway, anyway. Um, um, uh, so yeah, back to the 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 marketing thing. Um, well, I really want to ask about you know what it what it means to have a twenty five person company. And what everyone is doing. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, how many of those are developers? Uh, eight. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So the re- the rest are, are doing what, sales and, and support and that kind of thing? Project, yeah, support, um, project management, um, or customer relations. Um, we have marketing, we have finance, we have a documentation person. Um, we introduced the position, the power user, um, who um, is like a elaborated support person who knows how to um, do stuff in the wiki without having to change the code. Um, and um, what else? Of course, admins and DevOps. Um, so yeah, okay. That's I. I think we are rather typical mixture of like what such a company has. Mm. Um, we have the luxury of having one documentation person, which is uh, reflects that we think we need to be more. Um, uh, we need to go out more with our uh, work. And um, yeah. other than that, um, yeah, it's it's like, and um, I tell you what, you never have enough people, so it's uh, we're struggling <laughs> with resources, and um, we want we're not getting things done in time, if even if we want to. Um, yeah, well, yeah, just uh, just what Richard uh, was complaining about briefly is all the the work that has to be done just to keep extensions working with uh, yeah. newer versions of MediaWiki. Um, and this latest one, one one point thirty five, has had a lot of changes, and then yeah, there's more changes coming with all the parser and stuff. Anyway, <laughs> I know how that is. <laughs> um, although I do recommend that's uh, that's one uh, uh, advantage of having your code on the Wikimedia Git repository, which I think you you guys yeah, also we, have. Yeah, um, yeah. That, have it and and the good thing so. Um, Technical detail, but we developed until recently. We, we developed a, uh, against an old branch because we uh, we work on LTS media keys. So the latest oh, okay. uh, the, before that was one thirty one, and that led to um, the the tests in 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 this repository in Garrett. Um, they did not test against current uh, the current system, but now we switched because the new LTS came out, and that helps us a lot, of course, uh, to have all these automated tests and, and um, work against yeah. those. Sure. Um, yeah. So, well, okay. I mean, um, I'm I'm aware of the time already. There's so yeah. much more I want to get to. Um, so yeah, as far, as far as marketing of the software, is there what what is now the uh, the, the the elevator pitch as they call it for Blue Spice? If you if you know if you had 20 seconds to talk to to convince someone who's never heard of Blue Spice to use it, what would you say? Time starts now. Oh, I'm it's a, it's it's an enterprise ready-made media wiki which provides you with the most important features to uh, organize documentation, management systems, and creating manuals in a perfect in the wiki way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Ten seconds. Yeah, ten seconds. <laughs> that was t- oh okay. No. <laughs> and, <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, it's, all right. it's, there's, an, there's an enterprise demand for that and uh, so you, you have to put it in, in that word enterprise and uh, so 10 people have 20 opinions what enterprise means and, um, and you have to ask your customer what, what they really are asking for and then okay we can do that as well <laughs> yeah um, yeah yeah the, 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 well, the, the word enterprise reminds me I mean uh, I've uh, this is there's a there's a branding question around the uh, around what I call enterprise media wiki. Um, I mean, <laughs> you you guys might have <clears throat> thoughts about this both as people who use so called enterprise media wiki and as you know uh, what I'd consider people uh, branding experts. Um, um, I mean, 
I, I, something I've been thinking about for a while is it, it might really make sense to have a separate name for media wiki plus semantic media wiki or cargo plus page forms and uh and uh, all the rest of it um yeah i've been trying to get people to call it enterprise media wiki which has caught on a little bit but not all that much um but i mean there's there's nothing to stop us from from just giving it its own name and, and you know we call it fluey or something uh and then we could you know start to develop a brand identity around it and and you know if that really caught on, you guys could uh, could say, you know, we're we're uh, we're the, the the world's top fluey distribution, something like that. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, both as as out, you know, just just from a branding perspective, and and as people who actually use the software, do you have any thoughts on that? On 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 having a, a separate name for for, for media wiki plus all this stuff, you know, that's never going to end up on Wikipedia. Uh, so I, I think it's um, if you try to rebrand semantic direction to enterprise then that only matches uh, not everything that has to be included uh, into uh, under the enterprise umbrella um, because you need the services for that you need uh, it's not only semantic it's much more and uh, then you have hosting services cloud services all around that templating for instance um, I, I would um, I would uh, love to see a discussion about that but I think it's um, a precondition is that people learn to come together and not only to work everybody in its own sandbox that is what we have to learn as well and so we, we come from this also from our side and say, okay, we are doing boost buys and nothing else. And um, if the people learn that they can bring all those different projects together, then I think it's it's useful to have an, an, an umbrella for that. Or maybe a, a, I would love to see a, a common project, you know, like a, a distribution, which is everybody sharing or so, and it gets an own name, a nice name, uh, could be enterprise, could be anything. Um, and uh, I don't know what you see. Yeah, so so you're probably aware that we have this there's this user group called MediaWiki stakeholders, and uh, one of the reasons why we uh, created that group uh, was because we wanted to sanitize a little bit more. So, um, and and that idea of having a distribution um, it, that is based on more than individual um, um, individual preferences um, that has been floating around quite for a while so um, but I think it's you shouldn't imagine that to be super easy so um, because if if you want to have that call it fluffy dis uh, fluffy distribution um, then that's even better than mine yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah you know it sounds nice um, then uh, you have um, an extension A, and uh, that is used by um, by um, one uh, group of people, and then um, that somehow collides with extension B. But you want to have the functionality in there, and then you you have all these discussions. And I think that's important to have these discussions because a, a distribution that should that is accepted should be based on. A wide consensus among the people that use MediaWiki in a more like professional way, um, but um, that yeah, that also requires people to be involved, right? So um, and without the consensus, um, it will not work. I I think we've seen several MediaWiki distributions, people trying to bundle stuff in various ways, and it never got a big success. So I think the the way to to make that a successful thing is to bring a lot of people together, strengthen the ecosystem, get some common ground there, even though we might then individually go jump from that platform, right, to different paths. Um, but um, that's that's where it can become successful. And as, yeah, from a marketing perspective, that is because then Yaron Korn could go out and say, hey, I built on the fluffy extension and those guys could go out and say, we built on the fluffy extension and I don't know, um, other companies could do the same. So that would strengthen this base, right? That will strengthen it. Yeah. yeah. I, and I think it's not only an, 
But what I want to stress in the, at this point is um, to be successful does not only mean you have high technical skills, that's one thing, or you have good extensions or so. Um, but if you are dealing with an enterprise environment, the product has also an, an, a commercial side or legal side. So um, it, it depends heavily on how your contract looks like. And if you, if you always have problems with the legal um, department, oh, that's crazy. So you learn how to, how, do, how you, your, your service contract has look like that they say okay that's fine uh, don't make me think that's okay there are no right. serious troubles um, it's about pricing it's about um, uh, how there are so many things uh, it's how you sell that to people and uh, make them comfortable with you that you know what they are talking about and uh, you see their problems and have uh, some sort of solution so it's much more than only uh, the technical side of that so, and uh, if we talk about how can we make MediaWiki uh, more distributed within the, the organization world, not only for profit, also but the non-profits, um, we have to learn much more about this. So it's, uh, so we, we are struggling every day with that. And uh, I think we have found some solutions for that, but uh, we are still, looking for ideas and new approaches <laughs> so this is an ongoing process okay yeah i mean as far as as far as you know business practices i mean yeah i mean uh, you know we're, we're not trying to solve all the problems uh, um but it, just to, i mean i i think it's doable or maybe doable to solve just at least this one problem which is which is uh um a, identity of this uh, of this set of software which mm -hmm. you know you, you you can't get everyone to agree 100 percent. this extension is part of this software set or distribution this extension is not but i think there's some basic um features you know every, uh, if i'm allowed to say it, every, just about everyone is using page forms who's involved in this uh in enterprise world uh and there's a, there's a, a few other things like that um um uh yeah and, and, a, and a pdf solution makes sense for everyone that kind of thing um yeah so just just in terms of being able to differentiate it from media wiki uh you know cuz that that's always that's always something that surprises people is you know um when when they hear that the the, the name media wiki it brings up a bunch of uh connotations that don't really are not really true for the things that we do yeah because um, because uh, the the uh, the whole thing has changed uh, so i i would agree that many people don't even know that they can use media wiki in a professional environment um, yeah. they see it as a helpful tool for an IT department for instance or so uh, but you can that you can do much more and uh, that you can then you have extension developers you have help and and then you can compare it to other solutions which are uh, yeah like like conference um, or, and, and you find your own way with that software they, they it's following in another philosophy um, that is not in the heads and in the minds of the people. And uh, so there is a lot to do to make public relations, to publish to what, what is going on. And this is a, is an, um, it's, it's, it's a vital community there. And uh, you can use it in, the, in that way, which you maybe don't expect at the first glance. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, we'll we'll keep talking about it. I hope uh, it'll come up at the uh, the next SMW con. Uh, so actually, well, that brings up that. Uh, well, it's interesting um, that you guys have both done a bunch of um, have done more. I, I think community related community building things than uh, than uh, one would think for 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 uh, you know people from Hollow Vault, <laughs> I guess. Um, um, 
uh l- let me see you mentioned the the media wiki stakeholders group i actually i didn't know that, that you guys were involved in uh in helping to create it yeah uh, t- together with uh, mark Hershberger, i was basically one of the founders of that group um and yeah it, it was um, out of that we saw that there is a need for um for organ for an organization that reflects the um the perspective of outside the foundation uses of media wiki um and um that it was at a time mark and i were doing um were helping with media wiki releases at that time and um the question was whom do they does the foundation the releases for and and what can we do with it and you know why do we even release media we can that was right. um we talked about that and 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 we said we need to um also the foundation was somewhat involved in that idea so we talked about uh, why don't we create some external entity that kind of cares about media we keep for this third party world um and then yeah um we um we we um try to to at, at media wiki hackathons we spread the idea a little bit and and then uh, uh i think 2014 yeah. we had that founding foundation founding meeting mm. constitutional meeting if you want to put it and hey, really six years ago yeah yeah oh, I, uh, i looked it up today and uh, uh, actually the, that's six years ago <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> yeah um and um i think I wasn't totally convinced all the time throughout this these years that this would become something uh but now it has a stable base of people that attend the meetings and uh, they really want to do something it's incorporated by now so it's a legal entity and can receive donations. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that true? Okay. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know about that last part that you that you have a, a bank account finally or whatever. Yeah, 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 that's that's uh happened over the last year. So, um it's because we we felt the need for professionalization um and yeah so um that's that's part of the community work um, we do i mean yeah yeah there's a lot of of community involvement of hollowed people i think robert uh, fogel my um Uh, my senior architect he is among the top contributors to um Garrett um he Garrett contributes a lot so um uh, we also maintain some extensions which are not under the umbrella of blue spice um and we try to be active in the SMW and um media wiki community so community work is a big deal for us and it's not only because we want to sell stuff but it's more like um we are convinced of the idea of having this open source counterpart of a wiki hmm. and as i said this this That's software interesting. that that has a mission um and i really um i'm 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 happy and proud to be part of that um uh that community and that ecosystem yeah uh yeah mark mark hershberger still hasn't been on this uh, on the podcast even though he's come up quite a bit uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, so. he's like one of those hub <laughs> persons like everyone refers to <laughs> right yeah um uh, i mean what uh, it, it seems like the, the, there's a few different goals for the media wiki stakeholders group and it's it's uh, i don't know i mean it, it's sort it's sort of, we've sort of uh we it's sort of been hinted at in our, in this discussion here just because there's so many aspects to it that 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 same complex complexity makes it also hard to to get something concrete out of uh, a, a group like media wiki stakeholders group because there you know there's all these different questions that are sort of tied in with one another um ultimately someone has to just say okay this is how we're going to do it and that's it and i don't even know if that's possible you, you know what the biggest success of uh, of the stakeholders um is the group just being still there um and uh, the reason yeah. for this is and I'm, i'm not saying this because i want to diminish what we have achieved um in in common projects but it is when you when you go to um wikimedia um events then there is an entity they can refer to that kind of is a signpost for hey there is a world outside of the foundation that uses media wiki right so right that is that is the biggest thing here um and we we have um 
we have a, quite a significant group of, of users and use cases in this in this group. So I, I mean, again, I don't want to make it bigger than it is or more successful. I don't want to diminish it. I think realistic view is um, we are all volunteers in in the stakeholder group. We could have achieved more if we would spend more time, but. Um, we're still here and we're heard um, and we're being referred to. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's the point. Yeah, I just saw actually there's a there's a current uh, RFC or whatever exactly it is for the tra for transferring over to GitLab. It's kind of a minor detail, but I saw that you, yeah. Marcus, are one of the people who are have make the ultimate decision or something like that or on the committee or something. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm so, I, actually, I, they, I was asked if I could contribute uh, my view from like the outside world to this. Right. Um, I, of course, I feel honored to be part of such a group. Um, and yeah, let's see what comes out of this um, discussion. I personally yeah. am much in favor of switching to some more common uh, ways of developing because. It, it, The perspective, of course, is onboarding of developers, right? And um, I've seen quite, if you don't attend the MediaWiki hackathon, you want to start coding for MediaWiki is really hard because Garrett is so much uh, different from what normal GitHub experience is, right? So, right. Um, and, and I think it would really help the onboarding process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, sure. Yeah, that's a whole separate discussion. Yeah, but, definitely. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you can spend weeks on that. I can't can tell you. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, so yeah. Speaking of community outreach, um, there's a few things. Um, you guys uh, just recently, well, I guess MediaWiki stakeholders group uh, in in theory recently launched the the MediaWiki experts blog at MediaWikiExperts blog, which is a nice URL. Um, uh, yeah, you, you announced it like six months ago or something, uh, uh, but it only came out a week or two ago. I think that's why it has a post on there that I wrote for it back in May. Um, but you know, better late than ever, um, better late than never. Um, uh, it, <laughs> yeah, it, it's weird. I think, I think you, Richard, are the main force behind it, even though it's billed as a uh, blog of the media wiki stakeholders group. Um, Are you, are you, I mean, is, is that true? Is that, is it really your, your baby, I guess? Yes, I would say it's just, it's clearly an initiative, initiative that comes from, from me. And, um, just because, uh, we, we have seen that there are many blogs around uh, now, the Wikimedia, uh, Wikimedia tech blog, and uh, they have had the same idea at the same time. And we asked them if we can contribute or should working together, but, Uh, it turned out very quickly that uh, they have the focus on Wikimedia projects, and this is n clearly not the perspective of um, of the stakeholders. Uh, we want to take a view, a look at at the whole cosmos of around MediaWiki, and uh, um, I'm building bridges here and uh, make place for space for for people who want to. Um, Introduce to new features, extensions, and uh, you don't. I don't care for profit or non-profit, and so um, we have to open that uh, for 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 those people. And um, yeah, I can wait. Maybe that's that's a good idea, and we will see that within the one year, I think. And if not, okay, then it. Yeah. We, we gave it a try. Um, I'm, I'm very sorry that it took so long. Um, it was my fault. Uh, <laughs> I thought we I, can start it in April. and uh, But I didn't realize that we have to ask, of course, um, the foundation for the domain, uh, which should be mediawiki.blog. And then we, uh, and then I don't know why this discussion didn't start again. And then we came. We choose another. We make it just. Um, we take another name, MediaWiki Experts yeah. blog, which is much more easier to to launch. Yeah, actually, that's well. Uh, I, I want to talk about that, but but getting back to the whole, you know, fluffy idea or whatever. That's another uh, good <laughs> argument for having uh, a separate name for the distribution is just to, to get to get away from any legal issues. 
uh, for around, uh, you know, having, using the word media wiki and charging money for it or whatever, you, whatever else you want to do. I would appreciate that. So I, I really uh, think we should, we should talk seriously about th uh, things like that. So having another distribution other, with uh, another name or, um, yeah, um, so which keeps us a bit yeah. independent from others. So, but, Yeah, it's it's also true. You'll never become independent from MediaWiki as long as you don't have at least uh, 50 developers who can uh, do your own stuff. And um, that's the reality. We, we work. So we, we always, we, are, we, have, we benefit from this and we have also some disadvantages. And uh, yeah, we have always to find a good balance. Uh, well, I don't. Where, where did that fifty come, number come from? I, I don't. I don't understand. I mean, uh, I. Uh, it's, it's about a discussion here. I say uh, we need thirty people, and Marcus said we need <laughs> we need one hundred people, and then I, okay, okay, let's say fifty. I mean, <laughs> well, okay, yeah. I mean, it depends on how you how you look at it. I mean, I. I I've I've quote unquote developed a bunch of extensions on my own, but each of them has had a, a huge uh, well, all the all the ones that people actually use have had a a huge number of 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 people just volunteers, mostly people I, I don't know, uh, contributing stuff. In some cases, a lot of code. Uh, so you know you don't obviously you don't need to have fifty people all 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 on a payroll somewhere to to have uh, that amount of. Uh, contributions, or may maybe you, maybe you think you do. I don't know. <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, I think, um, but that is given. That depends on what you want. So, um, if if you have like media wiki and and you you're selling that to people for money or for no money, um, then what people expect is the stability of a software that runs Wikipedia. And uh, I am pretty sure that in order to maintain that stability, to maintain the software over like more than a year or two without it degenerating, you need quite a lot of people because it's just so huge and there's so many areas of media. Wiki. But I mean, you you're right. Um, in, in, in that respect that if you would give up that idea um, then of course it's easier you can maintain it with less people but you know then the question is would people really um, subscribe to it so, because that's the main point again, well, if you want to, to if you build a software on MediaWiki you're selling that stability um, aspect of it and that's I think that's really hard um, with two, three or, or even 20 people to maintain mm. on a professional level mm. okay uh, we well I, 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 I think I disagree we maybe we're talking about different things uh, but we should move on I mean you guys are using page forms and you know you, uh, anyway it doesn't matter we'll move, move on um, uh <laughs> Yeah, I'm. You know, it's it's obviously it's different when you're when you're selling something and 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 versus versus just giving away software as open source. But there's there's no shortage of of, of very widely used open source uh, applications and libraries that are just the work of uh, uh, one or two people. Um, as people sometimes discover when you know every once in a while you hear about some uh, some some virus that takes advantage of some some problem that turns out it's it's one guy somewhere you know one eighteen year old somewhere wrote it and, and whatever it is <sighs> anyway um uh so yeah there's the blog uh and I I guess uh, um yeah it's true I mean the the the, the Wikimedia tech blog is really focused on just well it's just kind of boring stuff it's like you know. Here's uh, we, we switched. We we're now using this other library, and here's how we did it and stuff. And it's not really it's not of interest to people actually who who are using the software or want to use the software. It's more just uh, you know, uh, look at us kind of thing. Um, so yeah, it's great to have this a true uh, you know, media wiki experts blog. I guess. So, do, I, uh, how are you uh, trying to get people to uh, contribute? Yes, of course we need authors. <laughs> Dozens, yeah. dozens of authors, and in the end, we need like an editorial team. Um, so we we just kicked it off now, and 
Uh, but uh, we need some, yeah, of course. Uh, now we will look if we find people who, who love to to write. And uh, you know this is not very easy uh, because we have many of technical experts around us, but uh, to write something is you know, always a bit different. But I'm I'm looking forward, yeah. That we will find some some guys and uh, yeah. and uh, yeah, it's it's a chance to have a spotlight on this. Uh, this is what for me is important. So we can set up another media wiki where we uh, discuss things. We need now something published uh, where with yeah colors and, <laughs> and with a good design and where people uh, say, I yes, think it looks good. Is, uh, I mean, it this looks is good a already. Wild project is it's not only a something for nerds. It's 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 something real. <laughs> yeah, um, for the but, cool people. Yeah. 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 No, I mean the the blog itself looks great. Uh, yeah. Um. Uh. And yeah, everyone should check it out. Um. Are there? Are there? Uh, oh yeah, there's a link here on how to how to to uh, write for it yourself. Um. Yeah, and there's a post there from me. So uh, so you know it's not just for nerds. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I hope to keep uh, to to re keep contributing to it. Um, uh, and then the other the 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 other I guess community build well definitely community building thing that you, that you guys are involved in or, or at least you, Richard, is this upcoming uh, SMW con the Semantic Media Week con. I haven't said it enough times. I guess Semantic Media Week conference, uh, which is going to be. Uh, November twenty fourth to twenty sixth, um, uh, and you, Richard, are the program chair for it. Yeah, um, I'm. I'm old yeah. enough now to do this. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 are you sure? um, yeah. Yeah. That's great. Um, uh, uh, Marcus, are you going to attend? By the way, you're not on the uh, sign up list. I'm. Uh, I'm among the three people that will attend in person in our meeting room. Um, we, oh, okay. <laughs> um, now we've been joking because there's one person, Lex, um, wants to come over to our um, office and then we will oh, have wow. the largest in-person gathering here for the SMW Con. Uh, we yeah, have right. two parties in the right. same place. <laughs> yeah, so it won't be, uh, it'll, it, it won't be in just a virtual only uh, meeting. It'll be, you know... Slightly in person, yeah, slightly event. Um, cool. So yeah, uh, Richard, uh, I guess this is more a question for you. What, uh, what, what are your plans for the for SMWCon? There's already quite a, a quite a few people who have signed up. Yeah, um, I was amazed that uh, so many people already signed up and uh, that we get already some um, contributions. Oh yeah, yeah, sponsors, yeah, yeah. Uh, we have responses. Um, so unfortunately, we're still looking for for use cases. So uh, this is something which I miss at the moment. But um, normally, you get the most responses one day before the. Before the oh, you're talking about pro, uh, actual talks. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah right. And um, yeah, but what I think what we can see is that uh, that the media wiki issues are becoming more and more space or yeah i i think we see more contributions uh, talking about media wiki uh, deployment extensions and less about semantic um i hope uh this is only an impression but uh, that would also um indicate that we need uh sometime um a, a sort of conference um, which uh, is much broader and for 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 media wiki uh, issues and topics. Um, what doesn't mean that we need, of course, a semantic media wiki conference because it's a own community. It's uh, it's a rich uh, and wealthy community, and I think that should be, um, of of course, that's necessary. It's always a part of it. But I think we can see that media wiki topics are growing. 
uh, or the, int- the, yeah. and the demand and the contributions become more and more. And maybe I'm wrong, but uh, that's my impression at the moment. Uh, about which part uh, that that it's growing or that that uh, well, yeah. Yeah, we've seen uh, that last year in uh, in, in Paris that uh, the the, uh, the number of contributions about MediaWiki um, oh, was, was, yeah. was great, and um, so it's it's my world, of course. But um, so I I hope that we don't don't lose the semantic part because this is uh, it's crucial uh, for this whole. Um, uh, media wiki world. Yeah, um, yeah, it's interesting. SMWCon in the beginning was was was, was a lot more, you know, s- big s semantic, and there were a lot of academics there and and people talking about you know uh, which triple stores to use and uh, all this. Uh, I can't even remember all the terminology, the semantic web stuff like reification and all this, all this stuff. Um, uh, and it really has become much more just you know just a component of a of uh, of you know a just uh, for lack of a better word an enterprise media wiki uh, uh, setup uh, which is I mean I, I've I, I helped change SMWCon in the U S to be EMWCon and um, I've said for a long time that I think the European one should change as well but um, yeah I don't know yeah I don't I, I what do you think about a name change. Speaking of name changes. Well, generally speaking, I think it would serve every aspect of MediaWiki well if it were not solely focused on semantic MediaWiki. Um, I don't think... So semant- it, it seems like, as, as, as we just analyzed, this semantic aspect is a little bit like diminishing. Um, and essentially... The conference is a professional use of MediaWiki conference, whatever sure. you want to call it. Um, now uh, I see that the, the I think I mean it's uh, there's a lot of identity politics in here. Um, so uh, it's I I don't know I I'm very reluctant to just say drop the name semantic MediaWiki because there's a lot of people that come to these conferences because they use Semantic Media Wiki. Um, but one way or the other, I think we need a conference and some SMWCon or EMWCon would be a good place for that, where we bring together the professional Media Wiki mm. use, users or maintainers. Um, and be it a Semantic Media Wiki conference or Enterprise Media Wiki conference or a Media Wiki conference for professional use or whatever you call it. But that's where the need is. Um, and I think, last word, if you just solely focus on, on semantic media wiki, that will not, that will stay a niche somewhere. Um, uh, and um, if, if we want to, did, did you see it, uh, as you said, uh, the, well, we've been to many of the SMW cons and, and it's like, it, it, it's the same people are revolving around the same topics. Um, which is great. I, I love to meet those people and, and I'm always looking forward to that. But I think it's time to broaden the scope a little bit to invite more people. Um, and um, that way, I think the conference needs needs a change here. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's not easy because of... Um, so, so one thing is that uh, semantic is... It's a vital part of that, and it will be become uh, more important in the future again because we have now artificial artificial intelligence, for instance, where uh, the data metadata is a crucial question. Um, we have uh, people who want to use uh, wiki content for chatbots or for other things, and uh, so this is not uh, it's not a topic uh, which is not important in the future. Um, but how to organize the marketing around that and to help to distribute all those developments uh, to a great a broader audience, uh, that should be our question. And um, so my answer, or maybe your the answer here is, uh, or could be, uh, how 
can we avoid to stay in our own sandbox? And maybe we need different names for different uh, distributions, for instance. So why not? Uh, we have uh, we have a Linux, we have Ubuntu, we have Fedora, we have um, Red Hat, SUSE, sure. Mint, and they all meet different um, users and they have different strategies. And uh, so why not going that way? And uh, have some we we should have something in common so we we should avoid that everybody is developing its own stuff and we need not 100 developers but 1000 to provide everything okay that's we should be realistic yeah and um, to standardize is a realistic way and that doesn't mean that maybe uh, so why not um, have a, uh, a distribution with cargo and semantic and people can choose which what they want to. They do the same within Linux, uh, sure. uh, choosing KDE or another um, uh, another platform. So um, I think that's all uh, thinkable and we can reach this within a certain time. And we have just to make up our mind about this. and. Uh, so and maybe we have also be pushed in that direction from others. Sorry, it's a yeah. Talk too long. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. No, there's there's that's a lot of uh, uh, you know big questions there. Um, yeah, I mean, just as far as Semantic Media Wiki, I, I think even for people who use Semantic Media Wiki, it's not it's not that it's that it's become less important for them. It's just it's be you know it's 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 a it's a, it's, a, it's it's, it's you know one of uh, a few different tools, or it's just you know one part of of. Sorry, where am I going with this? Um, you know, even even if you're using Semantic Media Wiki in a, in an enterprise or something, you, you, it's there's a lot of other things that you need to worry about too. If you're if, if you're actually implementing it in a serious way, um, you know, a, a workflow and access control and and everything else. Um, some of those things tie into semantic media, but still, it's not it's not like anyone is is just worried about populating a triple store like uh, like like they they used to be, or or actually, or worried about writing a paper about populating a triple store. Yeah. It's more 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 like it. Um, yeah. Um, uh, uh, yeah. As far as actually, as uh, as far as distributions and stuff, is there any? Uh, have you uh, considered? Uh, you know doing something like blue spice for uh for product management or or blue spice for uh for uh, iso compliance that kind of thing you know actually ha selling use case specific products that yes but we dropped it <laughs> oh, okay. so because i think that's that can be done with good templates i think so what we see is that you need a certain set of features that and with that set of features you can uh, provide many 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 use cases or at least four or five um, use cases you want to provide and uh, so the strength of media wiki is the template system and the strength is of course uh, it, you can uh, make it um, in the semantic way so um, that provides you with all you need to to meet all those different um, requirements right right um, yeah okay. I would say difference could be more than if you say okay I have a distribution which is um, it's, it's a rolling um, uh, we have rolling releases so we, we develop quickly um, or you want to provide a very stable edition for uh, industries which need a um, a software over five years without any changes because uh, they have to document every change that they hate it, and um, and it, it's about services and it's about locations. It's about um, there are my my service providers. Uh, so it's no uh, secret that we don't have um, just a few customers in the United States. And the reason is easy. Uh, you need somebody who is within the U.S. 
legal system and, and uh, you can pay with US dollars and you can get this guy or the girl um, within a few hours and you sit next to him or her uh, on the table. This is, that makes differences. And uh, so it's helpful more to talk about those things, in my opinion, it's my impression, than uh, about uh, providing use case specific uh, distributions or solutions. Yeah, okay, you're saying that at the point where you start talking about actual specific UK use cases, you really need someone there who's kind of, uh, what's it called, a, a, a domain subject subject matter expert? Yeah, like of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, that makes sense. Um, do you guys do you guys have resellers, by the way, that you sort of were getting into? We, that getting into that topic, um, uh, you know, uh, people in other countries who also provide services around Blue Spice. We we are actually trying to, or we we set up a new partner system. We we have had some, but uh, so yeah, um, it is it doesn't work very well, and we didn't put too much effort in this. But um, I see it's important to have a partner system um, that is, yeah, it's like every other partner system where you can resell, let's say, subscriptions and where you can sell your own services on top on it, of it. And um, yeah, that's what we are looking for. But it, I think it will take some time. If, uh, if there is somebody in the United States, uh, it's highly welcome. <laughs> yeah. But it also depends on uh, how we can share um, experiences between partner and us. So, uh, how can we sell this? How, what are the customers expecting? What are services? How can we charge this? And, and so on. This is, uh, it, it sounds easy. It isn't. And, uh, so what you need for a partner system, in my opinion, is a, a, um, a communication platform between, um, all the stakeholders in this partner system so that they can improve and provide you with the needed feedback and um, for, for different countries, for instance. So it, I think it's a difference to sell the same software in France uh, because there is another country, a culture. And uh, in, right. in, in, in Austria, it's easier. I don't know why. <laughs> uh. In Spain, it's completely impossible, I think. I don't know why. So it, you need somebody in Spain. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah, if, if uh, anybody listening to this podcast from any, from, I guess, any country outside of Germany and Austria, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can uh, contact Richard and Marcus. Uh, yeah, that could be, that could be a, a great way to get into MediaWiki consulting or, or just a, a great way to, uh, uh, you know, to make more money at doing MediaWiki stuff is, is partnering with you guys. Uh, cool. Well, it's been, I think, uh, it's, it's, it's been, a, I think over two hours now. I think this is the longest, uh, episode of Between the Brackets, um, or, or close to it anyway. Um, yeah. Well, thank, thanks guys for the patience to, uh, <laughs> keep talking for this long. Um, yeah, it was great, uh, talking to both of you. Um, this was, uh, you know, as, uh, this was a, hopefully the kind of uh, community building and, and so forth that, that you guys uh, are uh, trying to achieve. And we're, you know, hopefully achieving it here to some extent. Yeah. yeah. So thank you for having us and in your patience because uh, you have two people who talk, who like to talk, who don't like to talk. <laughs> That's great. Now you That's have good. to cut everything and, and uh, edit uh, no, I don't think so. This is all gold. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you for for giving us this opportunity and appearance in in your great podcast. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Richard and Marcus, uh, for coming on. And um, yeah, I guess I'll 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 see you uh, at SMWCon. Yes. Yeah. Looking forward. See you. Great. Bye. 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 And this has been another episode of Between the Brackets. 
I want to again thank my guests, Richard Heigel and Marcus Glauser of Hollow Velt and Blue Spice, for a long but very insightful interview, though it didn't feel that long. Thanks to all of you for listening. I hope you liked it. Stay productive, and I'll see you next time.